i don't want to waste your time if you you know don't want to learn anything you can simply drop off right now because if you want to become a figma master then only watch the entire video probably over a weekend you will able to complete this course uh, the figma course and by monday you will able to you know uh, be a figma master Hey what's up guys welcome to another exciting figma tutorial uh, well this is not a simple figma tutorial or a normal figma tutorial which we have on the channel this is a figma master class or a figma crash course which will take you to you know uh, from very basics of the figma to the masters in the figma and you will be able to do anything after watching this video in figma yes uh, even if you don't know any other design tool yes uh so this video is you know designed in uh different chapters those chapters are designed in such way where uh actually uh, you have to watch each and every chapter to become a figma master because uh the way those are designed uh basically you know we'll be doing a one single project uh in the figma and we'll be starting it from very basics uh, we'll be you know starting with introduction to figma uh what is the figma interface how to get started with figma how to create the first project in figma what are the key features which figma has then we'll be learning how to you know create components and use the components in figma uh how to master the figma components what are the different things which you need to know uh about the figma components right we'll be learning the figma component properties the the configuration part and all those things so you will be able to create a design system using the components then we'll be creating a cool stunning interface a stunning ui in the figma from scratch right uh, in the same video definitely because this video is going to be long 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 very long and uh, i don't want to take a lot of your time but quickly i'll walk you through what you'd be learning in this video because i don't want to waste your time if you you know don't want to learn anything you can simply drop off right now because uh, you will be watching the video and then you'll think oh uh, i i didn't want to learn that so i don't want to do that with you so yes if you want to learn figma uh, if you want to become a figma master then only watch the entire video yes uh, so where we were so yeah uh, we'll be learning how to create a cool ui design from uh, in figma from scratch yes and in that we'll be creating wireframes we'll be using colors we'll be using how to you know we'll be uh, seeing how to create typography in figma and how to use the colors and typography in your design to create interactions how to create prototypes in the figma then we'll be taking those prototypes and uh, we'll be seeing how to collaborate with the developers with the design team with the stakeholders and you know post that we'll be seeing how to create uh, animations in the figma right and uh, we'll be going through a lot of tips and techniques uh, to work efficiently in the figma and last but not least you will become a figma master after watching this video so be sure to watch this video in the given sequence watch it entirely yes so without any further delay let's jump into the video and get started with it well before that make sure you already subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon next to it because if you're not doing that then you are going to miss a lot of exciting content because that bell icon is not for me it is only for you so be sure to click that bell icon yes uh also this thumbs up button the like button which will you know motivate me uh which will help me to you know motivate myself and keep creating such amazing content for you so be sure to like the video right now because after that you will not get time to do the like because you will be you know creating a lot of things in figma so yes like it right now and then start with it so yes come with me in the figma yes so we are in the figma and in the very first chapter of this crash course so in this chapter we will be learning basics of the figma and about you know how to navigate in figma and what are the uh, figma interface and tools are so when you open figma first time you'd be seeing a couple of uh, predefined or you know out of the box uh, files which figma gives you and then you can create your own design files using this uh, plus design file i know uh, cta or you can open a figjam board using this uh, figjam board button you can import any offline file or any file which is stored on your computer using this import button you can import it uh, using from your computer your local file or you can basically import it from the google drive if you have any uh, jam board okay now let's see what else we have we have this uh, top 
bar or the navigation bar where we have home button which will take us to the home section of the figma or you know the landing page or landing screen of the figma then we have community where you can search for the plugins on the community where you can search for the project files you can search for the uh, templates and all those things on the community you can uh, you know open the plugins the project files from the community to figma and uh, start working on them okay and then you can create a new file and uh, get started with the designs on the left hand side you can see your account details where you can go ahead and manage the themes you can change your account settings you can uh, go to your community profile you can you know add multiple accounts to the figma you can log out from the figma as you know figma is a cloud based tool uh, if you don't know how to download and install the figma we already have a video on the channel i'll put the link in the description but uh, to be frank you don't even need to download or install the figma at all because figma smoothly runs on any browser so you can open it in your browser in chrome and safari you just have to go to www.figma.com and just simply log in there if you have already created your account if not then create your account you may use your google credentials to create the account or you know log in with google and then figma will create a free account for you and you can start exploring the features which figma has right so without any further delay let's uh go to the first file of the figma well before that only uh two more sections i will quickly cover here so you can see you know uh, on the left hand side uh, we have seen about the account settings and the settings related things uh, to your you know account manage your accounts and all those things then your search files which will basically allows you to search your files in this uh, in the all you know all files which you have stored in the figma then uh, your recent files is basically something which will uh, show you all your recently created files or recently edited files your teams and the drafts uh, is basically uh, when you go to your teams you can see the files shared or created within your teams if you have a teams uh, license you can create a team on the figma and then you can create you know uh, files within that team and then you can add your fellow designers to your team and then everyone can edit and collaborate on the same design files within your team okay so as of now we'll be just creating a simple uh, file so you can simply click on this uh, new design file or you can simply click on this plus uh, i have just you know created this uh, file or let's create one more so when you click on plus from here it asks you what you want to do do you want to create a new design file or a figma file or a, sorry a fig jam file so when you create new design file it basically opens up the new file i'll just close this because i don't want you know a uh, lot of files here okay now uh, i'll just open this and i'll show you how to delete the files okay it is just trapped so i guess it have not saved that file uh, or no it is not so i can you know get rid of any uh, of the older files just by you know right clicking on them and then just you know simply delete them you can uh, do all the things related to the file uh, for example copy link add file to the favorite uh, delete it duplicate it renaming moving the files to the team all those things can be done from the right click context menu okay now let's quickly go to the file if you have multiple open files basically you can see you know let's say i have two files open then you can easily navigate between these files uh, from up here okay i'll just close the other file now when you open any file uh, first time or when you create a file basically you can see the actual interface of the figma which we would be using to design our interface or you know to design the products on the top bar uh, is basically your toolbar uh, of the figma where you know you can see all the tools and the menus right so when you click on this first main menu button you can see you know the uh, menu which any typical computer application has where you know file edit view object text arrange all those different things related to the menu uh, and then quick actions where you can you know uh, basically open this uh, quick search bar so to open this you can hit command p which basically again you know open the same quick action where you can easily type in for any menu item and you can you know easily see all the related things uh, to what you have typed uh, in this quick you know quick action menu itself right so you don't have to you know basically uh, go to the main menu click on file and then do new design you can simply 
command p on the keyboard and you can type you know file and then you can create new design file from here itself okay so this is a very handy tip you can you know easily open any plugins uh, or anything using this uh, handy shortcut key so just in uh, just keep it in mind command p uh, okay now apart from the you know uh, first main menu rest of the tools or you know rest of the buttons which you are seeing here are the tools of the figma you know the first is move tool which help you to move your objects here and there on the figma canvas then you have frame tool or the region tool uh, in the region tool basically you can create you know uh, frames sections and then you can create slices slices is kind of a little bit older i never remember you know i have used slices in my recent projects uh, earlier we used to slices to you know uh, create multiple slices of the image and then load those slices in the html uh, just to you know quick uh, quick load uh, quick loading of the image uh, you know uh, just to save some bandwidth and all those things then you have you know all your shape tools uh, which basically you uh, allows you to create the predefined shapes or you know the primitives uh, where it could be rectangles lines arrows uh, ellipses or circles and then polygons and stars you can also put a image placeholder or a video in figma i would prefer to drag and drop the image directly into the figma canvas rather than you know doing it manually from the toolbar then you have uh, oops then you have uh, this pen tool which is again a common tool which uh, basically you know is available in any other design tools you have a pen tool you have a pencil tool pencil tool is a free hand tool pen tool is a tool where you know basically you have to click and create the vectors right but if you go ahead with the pen to pencil tool basically you just have to you know uh, draw it on the go right so it will create the vectors you may use uh, your drawing tablets to draw those shapes using pencils uh, you can use the, you know the pencil tool to uh, draw the objects on the go in your brainstorming sessions it will help you to you know basically uh, communicate in the brainstorming sessions visually right i do use it in my project brainstormings where you know in our design thinking workshops where uh, entire team is collaborating on a you know finding out a problem and then finding out a solution for the uh, that particular problem right and then we have text tool uh, i'll just keep this object here and i'll just add some feel uh, we definitely will be going to you know see all those things how to add feel shapes and all those things uh, or you know how to modify the properties but let's quickly go through remaining tools now we have text tool where you know you can create a uh, text in the figma so i'll just zoom in a little bit and i'll create a hello text okay and then uh, you have this uh, create component thing we'll go uh, sorry this uh, uh, resources thing where you know you can see all your components your plugins your widgets uh, loaded in the file or from the community or you know recently used plugins or you know all those things right so we'll go to all those things in uh, later chapters of the video but as of now let's you know just uh, hold up till the pen tool uh, sorry the text tool and then the hand tool well, now we'll be you know going to the navigation part of the uh, figma so how to navigate in figma now navigation when we talk about navigation the very basic navigations are basically zoom in zoom out and panning around the page so to pan around you can use the hand tool and you can simply click and drag here and there you know uh, to pan your entire canvas or your entire page not the objects there is difference in you know moving the objects and uh, panning around the page so you are panning the entire page so basically you are taking your slate if you you know take an example this is your slate and you are drawing objects on your slate now you are moving your slate from uh, you know one place to other place uh, that is something which you are doing when we are using hand tool okay and when you use move tool we are not moving the canvas we are just moving the object now if you see my hello text is there itself i am just moving this curve around it okay now uh, you would be seeing okay uh, i have to go to the pan tool do it manually it is kind of a tedious method so what you can do is basically you can simply hold your space so it will you know temporarily switch your tool to the pan tool and then you can you know do the same action using uh, you know while you are holding your space bar it will keep you know uh, it will allow you to uh, keep panning uh, as long as your space bar is you know pressed 
Okay, now uh, let's see how to zoom in, zoom out. So uh, I'm using a MacBook, which has a very good touchpad. <laughs> Definitely, it doesn't work with you know other touchpads. I had tried it with uh, my uh, pen tablet, which has uh, pen and touch. It doesn't work uh, very effectively with that. And I have also tried it on the Windows laptop. So uh, with the touchpad on the Windows laptop, it doesn't take the gestures and zoom in, zoom out very uh, smoothly. So what you can do is you can use your keyboard where you know you can use command and plus or command and minus to zoom in zoom out so command plus is basically zooming in command minus is basically uh, zooming out or you know you can say control plus control minus uh, is kind of you know doing your uh, zoom in zoom out kind of stuff okay now we have learned how to zoom in zoom out how we have learned how to create the basic objects or you know the basic primitives uh, I guess we haven't seen how to create the primitives, but we'll, let's quickly see it. Uh, you have to, you know, select any of the tools. So let's say rectangle and you can see, you know, all the shortcut keys related to all the tools next to them. So rectangle has R, line has L, uh, then, you know, you have shift and then L to basically uh, open up the line tool, right? Uh, sorry, the arrow tool and then you have uh, ellipse and then you have polygon and star. So you just have to select anything which you have to draw and then one way is you know simply click so it will create a default 100 by 100 pixels uh, object or the other way is you know you can simply draw it on the canvas so when you draw you have control how big or small you want to draw it's up to you and you can keep you know uh, drawing those objects up here now let's see you know how to draw a perfect shape versus you know how to draw a a non-perfect or you know basically uh i'll not say non-perfect there is nothing uh, called as you know imperfect or perfect <coughs> basically uh the difference between uh, these two is this is an ellipse this is a circle right so how to draw an ellipse and how to draw a circle to draw an ellipse you just have to you know open the oval tool and just you know draw it uh however you want you know whichever dimensions which you want and if you have to you know make a perfect circle you just have to hold your shift button and it will make a perfect circle for you now if you see uh, we are drawing drawing the circle from top right corner so i'll just let me you know show you what uh, what i mean so i'm just tentatively you know uh, putting this object here just for the reference point not uh, to be precise okay so I'm, you know, when I'm scaling it up and down, my object is being scaled from this uh, corner, you know, top, uh, top left corner of the object. But what if I want to do it from the center or center or the middle, right? So in that case, what you can do is basically, you know, you can keep holding your shift and then you can hold your alt button, which will basically scale up, scale down an object from the middle rather than you know, scaling it up from the corners. Okay. So uh, we are, you know, uh, good to end this chapter. So what we have learned in this chapter, we have learned how to create the basic shapes, uh, which Figma out of the box provide, how to uh, pan around the, you know, pages uh, using your space bar and, you know, move and pan, how to zoom in, zoom out using the keyboard, control plus, control minus, or you may use your scroll wheel as well. If you have a scroll wheel on the mouse, you can use your scroll wheel as well to zoom in, zoom out. If you have a MacBook or uh, if your you know device support good gestures, then you can simply pinch in, pinch out to zoom in, zoom out, and use two finger gestures to pan around the objects, okay, uh, or to the pages, right? So uh, in next chapter, we'll be you know uh, learning how to create frames, and we'll be also learning how to change properties of the objects which we have created on the frame, okay? So we'll keep them as it is for the next chapter, and then uh, let's modify them in the upcoming chapters. Okay, in this chapter, we'll be just, you know, quickly seeing how to change the properties of the objects which we have created, how to select them, how to move them, how to rotate them, how to scale them. Okay, uh, very basic things, but we'll quickly go through them because we don't want to make like we don't want to miss anything which is required, uh, you know, you should be aware of. So to select any of the tool, basically you have to use your move tool, right? And to go to the move tool, you may use uh, your, you know, V as a keyboard shortcut, right? And you can, you know, uh, click on any of the object on the page and you can select that object. 
now you can see you know i have this uh, red color or you know red feel to this oval and rest of them are default gray so how to change the feel you have to just select anything and you have to go to the properties panel so this right hand side is your properties panel of the figma and the left hand side is your layer panel so you can see all your different layers are drawn here right and uh, if you have to create multiple pages by default figma comes with the page one if you have to create multiple pages you just have to you know click on this page one up here and then you can create more pages here though we don't need multiple pages in this particular exercise but uh, pages are helpful only if you have you know very very large uh, design file where you know you have to keep your designs very well organized but i do prefer to have pages in my design system where you know i can create pages for uh, specific components like you know navigation related components button related components input related components cards uh, drop downs so basically you know uh, you can group your design system uh, pages and then you know those pages are represented as you know different sections in your design system when you publish your design library but as of now we don't need to worry about pages pages are just to keep your files organized when you double click on the page uh, name you can basically rename them when you do same when you double click on any of the object you can rename them you can you know select anything and you know right click the uh, right click on the object then you can see all other you know different uh, context menus which are related to the selected object so you can copy you can paste here you can paste to replace so you can copy something and paste it and replace the selected object uh, then you can you know copy the code of uh, the selection with the css ios or android you can copy as an svg copy this as a png you can copy the properties only when we say properties basically whatever properties we would be modifying here uh, such as you know field stroke effects all those properties will get copied and you can paste those properties to any other object okay now uh, let's see how to change the properties so you select something you go to the right hand side on the properties panel so this top section is about alignment so let's say i have to align these two objects in the middle you can you know simply select both of them and then you can use this align horizontal center right if you have to align them vertically same way you know you can use an uh, align vertically center so it will you know basically align both of the objects in the center i can show it you again so let's select both of the objects okay you have to select at least two objects where you have to be in a frame to uh, align the objects okay so uh, let's say you have selected two objects and now you have to align them to the top so you can simply do it you know align vertical top right if you have to do it align on the left you can do it so now you can notice you know the shortcut keys so you can use option a to align it on the left you can use option h to align it you know horizontal center option d to align it on the uh, you know right side same goes for the you know w for top uh, v for the middle and then uh, b for the uh, sorry s yes, for the bottom okay right so you can easily uh, align them and uh, create the you know very aligned uh, designs very quickly using the alignment options right now let's see how to change rest of the properties or what the properties are here so this thing is basically your x and y coordinates of the selected object so by default you know uh, when you draw something on the canvas it is uh, it has its relative position on the canvas or on the page or on the frame so that position is basically your x and y coordinates your width and height is basically uh, dimensions of the object so if you uh, you know increase or decrease the width of the object you can see you know the object is uh, changing its size so basically you can scale up scale down objects using width and height alternatively you can use you know uh, directly your uh, move tool and you can just you know uh, you know bring it to any of the corners or the edges of the object and you can simply scale up scale down the objects alternately it is changing the width and height of the object from you know both of the places now you can uh, change the colors so basically you can you know uh, go ahead and align any single color uh, assign any single color to any object and you can change it right let's select something else and let's add a <coughs> maybe you know i'll remove this and then I'll click on this plus again to add a different field just to show you how to you know remove a field and add a field. You can keep on adding multiple fields on top of that so it will basically blend those colors together. So now let's say you know I'll show you uh, maybe let's go with a uh, red 100% and then probably let's uh, start adding 
green or you know blue kind of thing so let's say green and we let's say keep on you know increasing it uh, so if you see when my green is somewhere around 50% and uh, though it is not the perfect green but you know somewhere around this so my green is when you know uh, uh, blended with red it is kind of producing the orange color without even you know the actual object has the orange color so you can you know use multiple field uh, layers in the figma or you know stack the field to create the desired look probably you know uh, let's say you may want to have a gradient as you know uh, a top layer and then your uh, background or you know the bottom layer is uh, static you know a single solid color right so you can you know basically change uh, the properties uh, of the object to you know get a desired look and you can change the percentage of you know the fields uh, between you know uh, these two field layers right so i'll just remove the second field i'll just keep one single field here now uh, there are you know different types of fields one is your solid color other one is basically you can create a gradient which we saw just now then uh, you can you know create gradients then again in the multiple options so let's say uh, create a simple gradient probably from a blue to green and then you can change the opacity of the color of the gradient so with that you know you can change the opacity then uh, you may change the gradient to the radial gradient to the angular or you know gradient to the diamond shape and you can modify you know the look and feel further using the handles for each of the gradient type okay so now you can see i don't want you know that much bright red i can simply do it something like that if i go to the radial gradient i probably you know i can create a light hitting to this object uh, you know something like this where you know this light is spreading across the sphere and now my 2d uh, sphere is looking like an 3d object so when i you know close this and let's say i just simply uh, move this somewhere here okay and i'll give it a dark color now it is acting up like a shadow i just have to move it uh, to the bottom so what we can do is you know we can use our layer stack here and we can you know move it uh, to the bottom of you know any object so it basically moves them uh, in the uh, in the layer stack right and you may use uh, your command and you know your uh, curly braces keys to move it up and down in the layer stack as a shortcut key right so let me just you know scale it down a little bit and just move it here so it basically create a perfect you know uh, 3d object where light is hitting from this side and you know there is uh, this nice crisp shadow if you want to you know again adjust the shadow you may probably go ahead and create a gradient here as well and then uh, i'll just create a linear gradient and i'll you know have it like this where my shadow is basically uh, fading away uh, you know as it goes towards the edge i can adjust the opacity of the selected color to get the desired look you know if i want a sharper or you know a softer uh, edges of the shadow i can adjust them based on this uh, opacity of the gradient so now you can see you know uh, my object is directly changed his appearance uh, just by you know changing the color so yes so we can you know modify all the different properties of the object and then based on the properties it basically gives you the results which you want now we have seen width and height now we have seen x and y coordinates we have seen the field color now you know we'll see uh, about the rotation so now when you see rotation basically you can rotate the object around 360 degrees right figma as of now doesn't allow you to choose a anchor point to rotate the objects but you can still do a cheat so let me you know show you a very quick tip around this let's say uh, and that's where you know let's say i want to rotate this uh, circle around this uh, center point so as of now i cannot rotate it when i start rotating it rotate just around its you know uh, its center so what we can do is basically now i will show you, you know uh, the frames uh, comes into the picture frames has a lot of you know uh, wide range of use so uh, what are the frames basically frames is nothing but your actual screens which you'd be creating you know frames has a lot of templates which figma gives you out of the box so to select the frame you have to you know to create the frame you have to go to this uh, region tools right and then select the frame uh, from here right and then you can choose which frame you want figma has uh, these different templates created 
uh, for us so you can use a uh, phone tablet desktop presentation watch a uh, paper uh, maybe social media templates you can see twitter post uh, facebook post and all those things then figma has a uh, templates created for the community where you can have profile banner profile uh, file cover and then you know your plugin icon uh, and all those things related to the community so let's create a maybe you know a custom frame to create a custom frame just same way just select the frame and draw it right so when you draw a custom frame it basically creates a frame right and uh, it have added the objects which are underneath uh, uh, which you know when we draw on it around the circle it has moved all those objects to this frame now what if i have to manually move any object to this frame so you can simply you know select any other object in the layer stack and you can you know simply drag and drop it within the frame so it will now move your objects to the frame you would be seeing okay it, why it is not visible because my frame is you know uh, is smaller and my object is outside you know the boundaries of the frame so to do that what you can do is basically you may either uh, scale up your frame right or uh, i'll just undo this to do undo you can use ctrl z or command z uh, to do the basically you know uh, to show the objects but i don't want to scale up the frame you can simply uncheck this clip content so by this you know your uh, frame is just with the same bounding boxes but still the objects which are within the frame still out of the bounding boxes of the frame are still visible right now let's say we want to rotate this object right so what i'll be doing i'll be selecting this frame and i'll be simply rotating this now you can see my object is rotating around this frame so by this you can create you know the custom pivot point so you can uh, think this as you know a very good cool trick which will be very helpful in creating animations especially with the figma and we'll be exploring this uh, later in this course okay now we have seen how to create the frames how to create uh, you know how to use the frame so let's create a standard template frame uh, just to you know uh, complete this course so i'll click the frame or you can you know simply hit f on your keyboard it will again select the frame uh, tool and you can see you know all the standard frames here so there are two ways again as we did for the objects you can simply select the frame and you can simply click anywhere it will draw a default 100 by 100 pixel screen you can simply you know delete that uh, we'll be creating it uh, for a template right so you can simply uh, again hit f on the keyboard go to the templates on the right hand side select any template let's select iphone for now let's select maybe iphone 14 and 15 pro okay when you click on the mm, template it basically automatically created the frame for you now let's see how to duplicate the objects and how to you know uh, create copies of the objects right so one way is basically you can simply hit ctrl c or command c or right click and then copy this and then paste it using ctrl v command v but to do it uh, in a but to do it in your you know uh, day to day design works it is a bit tedious so what do we prefer is basically use your uh, alt key or use your option key and basically you know uh, you can see it is now changing my cursor from one single move tool to basically there is one more arrow behind it so basically you can simply select any object hold your option or alt key and simply click and drag it and you know it will basically create a copy of this so let me create a quick copy of this here let me create a quick copy of this you can create copies without even you know doing a copy paste command you can simply duplicate the objects very quickly i'll just undo them uh, we don't need these lot of copies okay so now we have learned how to create the basic primitives how to create the shapes using the pen tool we have seen how to create the standard frames in the figma now in the next video we'd be creating the components and we'd be seeing you know why do we need components what are the components in figma and uh, why should we you know be using the components and where we can use the components okay now let's jump towards the next chapter and uh, continue our journey towards becoming a figma superhero well before that make sure you all be subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon because if you're not doing that then you will not receive any you know notifications for the future upload and you will probably miss the exciting videos which uh, will be uploading on our channel so it's for you 
So let's continue with this third chapter of the crash course. In this chapter, we would be creating components and we would be seeing why should we creating components and you know uh, why should be using components in our design. So basically, let's uh, say let's assume you know we have a navigation bar in our design. So I'll quickly draw a navigation bar, very rough and very you know uh, quick and easy. So let's say it has height of somewhere around uh, 45 pixels. Okay and then let's create a text in the navigation bar uh, maybe logo okay and i'll just make it bold your design doesn't matter we are just uh, seeing you know why we should be having components and why we should be creating components so i'll just make it white and i'll make it uh, black just uh, maybe you know to create a dark theme not the perfect black but uh, somewhere near the black and then let's say we have a icon on the right hand side okay i'll just group them together and i'll change the color to white for the icon i can simply select my logo and uh, icon and align them in the middle horizontally Okay, so we have aligned our logo and icon to the center. Now, uh, let's say, you know, uh, we want to create it in multiple frames, right? So I'll just duplicate this. Uh, oops, I'll select entire and I'll group it. I'll just simply, you know, make a copy of this and, you know, use it in any other frame or, you know, all of the frames which I have in my uh, design. So let's say now, uh, there is a need and okay i don't want this icon you know client comes to you or users come to you and they say okay this icon is not identifiable or this icon is not you know something which is uh, good to go ahead or you know the color which we have used for the background of the navigation bar is not going uh, well with you know rest of the elements of the uh, the application so i want to change the color of the background so now let's say uh, i have you know multiple frames where i have already used the same navigation bar and i have to change it everywhere uh, what you have to do is you know you have to manually select all those objects and then you know change those colors manually okay so to avoid this you know it is very subtle or very simple change and it is you know easily doable you can simply select an object you can then say select all by you know maybe you can go to the edit menu you can say select all uh, with the same field and you can select all objects with the same field but it is not always that easy to you know make uh, those changes or you know adjust the things in the uh, <coughs> you know in the objects or you know uh, but it is not always you know that easy or that simple to select the objects and change them on each and every page very easily so that's why you know this component comes into the picture so let me you know simply uh, duplicate this i'll move it outside the block okay i'll create a component so how to create a component basically you can right click on this and uh, you can find create component in this context menu and or else you can you know go to this uh, create component button up here you can use your shortcut keys where you know option command and k uh, which will create a component for this so i'll just you know simply click on this button which has created this component for me i'll just rename this component and i'll say you know nav bar so i can simply double click on the name and i'll say nav bar okay so now i have created my very first figma component and now let's see how to use these components i'll keep these frames as it is i'll simply you know duplicate them at the bottom and i'll get rid of uh, all these things i'll show you one more tip here guys so what you can do is you know basically uh, there are two ways you can delete this right and then you can create a copy of your component and uh, bring it in the frame and align it manually but even you know uh, what you can do is basically i'll just undo this you can just simply you know copy this okay and you can simply select all the objects where you want to paste right click uh, and then you can say paste to replace or you can say you know uh, your shortcut keys uh, basically command shift r and it will you know replace the nav r component with the group which we had uh, in our frames now you can see on the same place 
my uh, nav bar group is replaced with the component now why do we need component let's go back to the same use case now let's say i want to change the font of the logo or i want to change this icon or i want to you know change color of the background very simple use case for now so what you can do is you can go to your uh, main component and you can simply you know change the color so when you change your color at one single place it is automatically updated in all of the you know uh, childs of the component wherever we are or the instances of the component wherever we have used that component so now you know uh, it is using the components is you know very easy and uh, very very you know uh, basically it it reduce your lots of efforts you just have to create a component once and then you can use that component uh, for you know lifetime of the project you just have to modify one at it at one single place let's say i don't want this font i want something else you can go back and you know choose any other font i'll just choose a little bit font fancy one maybe this one okay now it will automatically reflect to all you know of my uh, instances of the component wherever i have used in this case what you have to do is you have to select all those text manually then you know go back and change the color so it is very tedious process and that's why you know figma have introduced the components uh, to it and you can create the components very easily so you just have to you know select any object let's say this is my ball and i want to create a component out of it you just have to select the object and you just have to click on this create component button that's it it is not necessarily it has to be a navigation bar it has to be a button it has to be whatever uh, which is you know going to be a reusable element in your design you can simply make a component out of it okay now uh, in this chapter we have just seen how to create the components in the next chapter we will be seeing how to master the figma components and probably we will be taking an example of a button and a navigation bar uh, probably i will go ahead with a desktop navigation bar because it has more complexity and we will see how to create a perfect desktop navigation bar component so let's wrap up this chapter okay let's continue with the next chapter where we will be mastering the figma components so far we have seen uh, you know the basics of the figma we have seen uh, how to get started with figma how to create a new design file how to create basic shapes basic primitives how to create a normal component how to use the component why to create a component and you know uh, how it is easy and uh, you know uh, very quick to modify the component and uh, reflect the changes in all of our designs very quickly just within the fraction of seconds right so now we'll be getting rid of everything which we have created so far and we'll be creating a perfect navigation bar component so we'll be creating a desktop nav bar and probably we'll be seeing the responsive factor of it so this chapter is going to be a little bit longer but uh, be sure to watch the entire chapter because if you miss any of the step you may not get the exact results right so i'll get rid of everything i'll create a you know new navigation bar and now we'll be exploring you know a little bit advanced options uh, or which you know figma provides uh, such as you know auto layouts and components and you know the responsiveness uh, using variables and all those things okay so let me first create a frame uh, so okay i guess i shouldn't have deleted the iphone or you know the frame which we had created here because we need them to the you know uh, for the testing purpose so i'll create one more frame uh, just for the testing uh, maybe of a desktop okay now let's probably use macbook 16 inches uh, macbook pro 16 inches okay so this is our uh, mobile this is our desktop right now we'll be creating a component first uh, which is going to be our navigation bar so what do we have in navigation bar first of all we need a logo right so let's first create the logo we'll not create a logo from scratch for say but we'll just create you know a component which is you know kind of hold our logo so i'll just say uh, probably 32 pixels okay and i'll have some sort of shapes uh, around the logo just to make it as you know okay just adjust this a little bit you don't have to be that much precise uh, this is just you know for the 
tutorial or you know just for the reference okay uh, so we have this some sort of cool logo uh, which you know basically you have a thumb or kind of thing and i'll just have a fill to this same way uh, how you know we have added fill to rust up the objects which we have created i'll just choose a new random color for now I'll just choose any random color for now, which could be any color. Uh, I'll just get rid of the stroke. Okay, so my logo is ready. Now I'll select both of them and I'll create a frame. So, uh, so far we have seen, you know, we first used to select the frame and we used to create a frame. But now we'll be seeing an another approach to creating a frame. So I'll select both of them together and I'll right click and I'll say frame selection. Okay, so what it does is basically it creates a frame uh, out of your all your selected objects and when you expand this frame you can see your vector one and your logo text is here. Again, I don't want to use this uh, frame selection uh, so far as of now because I'll show you one more trick uh, and we'd be exploring the auto layout option, right? So what auto layout does is basically it creates a layout automatically or it creates a frame which basically holds a layout uh, where you can give the layout direction and the spacing uh, within the items in the layout and padding around the edges, right? So I'll select both of them and I'll simply click on auto layout, okay? Uh, when I click on this plus next to the auto layout, it will basically create an auto layout for me and I'll just undo it one more time and I'll show you a shortcut key. So you can select one uh, or you know multiple objects on the frame and just have to hit shift plus a so when you hit shift plus a it creates auto layout and based on your objects it has automatically determined the direction of the layout so now you can see you know uh, as our objects are uh, you know aligned in this uh, direction so it have you know taken the auto layout direction as a horizontal layout if you want to have it in a vertical direction, you just have to change the direction from here and it will take your uh, auto layout in the vertical direction. So with this, you can you know easily create the layouts which are uh, very easy to adopt uh, any style in a direction very quickly. Now let's see how we can adjust the spacing. So to adjust the spacing, basically you can you know uh, change this uh, horizontal padding as you know the objects are in the horizontal layout. It is asking you to change the horizontal padding. If you go for a vertical layout, it will ask you to add the uh, vertical padding, you know, vertical gap. So let's uh, give it 10, okay, for now. Uh, and now let's say I want, you know, this to align at bottom or top. As of now, this is aligning at, at the, uh, you know, uh, left center. So let's do it left bottom. Now, you know, it will align uh, my object to the bottom of the uh, logo or the, the frame. And if I do it top, it will align at the top. Let's keep it uh, middle only for now, okay? And I'll give it a name logo. Now you have created a, a small, you know, nice logo. Uh, and now we can, you know, change this uh, font as well. Maybe something. I'm just thinking of, you know, uh, a fitness app or something in my mind. I'm not sure yet uh, with that, you know, which app we would be creating. But probably we can simply create a, a cool logo or I'll go it go with, with maybe Poppins, uh, one of, you know, a good looking font. I, I like this font a little bit. So yes, uh, let's go ahead with very simple and I'll just scale it up a little bit. Okay. Now we have this, uh, some sort of shape in the logo and we have the text, uh, which we want in the logo. Now let's create a component out of it. How to create a component, select something and go to this create component button or, you know, use your shortcut or right click and uh, click on you know create component from in here so you can create component from three ways choose any of your preferred way uh, let's create a component now it has you know created our first component uh, logo component now let's say uh, I want you know to have this text dynamic as you know uh, as of now you have to go here you have to select the text layer you have to manually type it but let's say if I want you know uh, like the same logo uh, but it it is uh, it has to be used for though that is uh, you know not a valid use case but let's say i want to use the same logo uh, for you know two different products of the same client so they have you know uh, a, a client brand, brand logo and then uh, name of the application so name of the application would be changed based upon the you know the logo which uh, or the product which uh, we are designing right so considering this use case a hypothetical use case 
we need an ability where you know we should be able to change the text of the logo uh, now you would be saying yes we can still do it let's say uh, we have you know this in our frame and now if i change uh, the text here it is changing in both of the instances of my child but i don't want to do it like that okay so uh, how i want i need an control where you know i can give a name uh, for this logo uh, you know maybe logo 1 here and i need an ability to give logo 2 uh, here okay so how we can do it now we will be start using the properties for the components how to create component properties now go to your master component now i'll show you how to go to the master component easily now you can select any component instance uh, from any frame doesn't matter as long as uh, you have the master component for <laughs> any of the selected component now you will see you know uh, it shows you this uh, component here and then it shows you this uh, small you know uh, four uh, four squares or four dots which basically shows you go to main component or you can you know right click and then you can find uh, go to main component from here as well it will take you to the uh, logo component uh, the main component and you can you know modify this component uh, as and when needed so now let's create the properties for the component so as of now we need a text property because we need an ability to change the text dynamically based upon the you know uh, my product right but i want to use the same component so what we can do is we can basically create a text property how to create a text property uh, now select the text layer of your logo uh, of your component this is vector this is text right so i'll select this uh, text property you can do it either uh, from the canvas as well you just have to double click and select the text once you have selected your text property you can see you know it is showing you your text box here uh, which you know whatever your text entered in your component and it is showing you this uh, create text property button so when you hit this create text property button it basically asks you to give it a nice name now i'll give it let's see product name okay and i'll give it name uh, maybe product one which is let's say figma okay and i'll say create property okay now when i go to my frames and when i select any of the logo it basically allows me to define the project name specifically for this frame or for this selected instance now i'll give it uh, maybe adobe xd okay so when i change the text for any of the instance uh, of you know uh, uh, of the logo it is allowing me to change the product name for that selected instance i can probably may have photoshop okay or i can create one more copy of this and i can then have something else illustrator so with this you know uh, dynamic text property you can create the components which has an ability to change the things over the fly while designing itself okay so as of now uh, we need the same uh, like we don't need this dynamic uh, behavior for our logo but we'll create that if we you know plan to go ahead and create such kind of uh, designs in future so our component should be capable to do all those uh, po like possible things uh, which figma allows so i'll just uh, go back and say figma here okay now uh, now we have created the uh, most important factor of the navigation bar which is logo or the brand uh, now you know just to keep a track of you know what are the things which we have to create i'll just list them down so first thing is logo which is done second thing is menu item okay then uh, profile icon okay and then uh, probably we need uh, a bell icon or notification icon i'll say okay and uh, we will also need a menu icon uh, just in case of mobiles because we'll not able to fit all our menu items so menu icon and i guess uh, these are you know uh, more than enough or you know uh, uh, good to have properties in our navigation bar and uh, which will be you know more than enough to create any kind of complex navigation bar easily so now we have created logo now next thing is we have to create a component to hold our menu item now what a menu item could consist basically a menu item could contains an icon a text right icon could be on the left hand side or could be on the right hand side so uh, 
now will you know uh, be seeing a quick plugin uh, or you know a quick community file to get the icons so what we can do is we can go to the uh, community or i'll say you know uh, go it from here and i'll search uh, by the way you know this is a cool plugin developed by us a ux mate a project cited by ux mate we'll be seeing this uh, you know in in uh, in our future chapters where we'll be creating the text styles so this plugin is very helpful to get started with your project and it you know automate your job of creating the text styles very quickly just by a simple you know single click and you can create the text styles uh, uh, definitely you know this plugin is just released uh, day before yesterday and we are working on you know uh, further extending the features and the functionality of this product so it is still in its you know uh, first iteration kind of thing and it would be having more features in future so yep uh, let's see uh, i i want icons right so font awesome is one of the you know very uh, very good uh, icon library and which we would be using here so i'll say font awesome official icon okay i'll open this in figma so it will open a playground file of the font awesome and i need this component i'll go to the components i'll select any of the component uh, but i'll go with the free components because uh, we want a free component maybe i'll go to the source page you can you know simply copy uh, this uh, from the source of this file or you can keep it here as it is doesn't matter and you can simply you know get this component i'll just copy this and uh, paste it in your file now you can use the same component uh, but the only problem of you know using this approach is if you know uh, owner of this file have modified this icon uh, uh, where you know it is referring to probably we may lose the you know characteristics of the icon uh, so we'll just you know not i'll not recommend to use this icon as it is from here what you can do is basically you can you know copy the source icons from here so as we need only you know uh, free font awesome icons so we can you know simply copy this and we can uh, bring this in our file okay and we can put it somewhere here and now rather than you know using the icon uh, from that other file we can simply create a copy of this sorry we can uh, we can simply bring the instance of this icon here now uh, when we change you know uh, name here uh, maybe times it will basically you know automatically update the icon based on the icon name and you can you know uh, change the sizes of the icon so 1x 2x 3x up to 10x right you can change the uh, style of the icon as this is not available in the other style but uh, i'll go back i just undo and i'll see let's have smile and when you you know choose the regular icon it basically gives you an you know a, a line icon so this is a very good uh, component which font awesome has created and if you break down this component basically they have created you know uh, nothing but a component which has different uh, variants and we'd be seeing how to create the variants and how to create you know such complex components and they have created you know the text property so if you see uh, they have nothing but the text property uh, for this entire icon so you can see you know the icon name is a text property something similar what we have created here for our logo like the brand name right then they have styles so different styles they are like the solid and regular which we can change from here solid and regular and now they have uh, further properties like padding which will basically uh, add padding to the icons then they have scale uh, which basically changes the uh, you know scale from uh, 1x or maybe 0.5x to the 10x uh, just by swapping the instances okay so as we need to create a menu bar uh, you know or a navigation bar which has a menu item with the icons that's why we need this uh, uh, this plugin or it is a good to have plugin not necessarily you need to use the same you can simply uh, get rid of this and we can create our own as well so we'll uh, just do it you know the other way so i'll get rid of this So let's create a drop down icon for now which we'll be using in our menu bar so i'll just randomly draw a down arrow but i guess before that i'll create a frame so that would be somewhere around you know uh 
32 by 32 pixel to get started with you know that should be your uh, you know minimum dimensions of icon you can have the smaller icons as well but then you know considering the accessibility uh, i prefer to have somewhere you know which is somewhere around 32 by 32 which basically uh, makes you know the icon large enough that which is clickable uh, more than clickable i'll say tappable from the mobile devices as well because uh, you need to make sure that you know icons are uh, you know large enough uh, where you know user can cover at least the thumb portion or you know the finger uh, fingertip of the user where even they are interacting with the components so make sure to you know uh, design your icons design your buttons in a way where we are thinking about the accessibility part you know uh, so there shouldn't be any uh, accidental click or accidental tap uh, even if they are using on a mobile or you know in a smaller screen okay so uh, we have created a simple uh, down arrow but let's modify this a little bit and let's have the rounded corners so I'll just have you know edges of the line with the smooth and round okay and I'll just give it a name drop down I feel uh, we should be having you know a little bit of uh, stroke width so somewhere around two which uh, looks good okay now we have created the logo now we have the drop down icon uh, which could be part of our menu item right now we have to create the menu item so uh, when we say a menu item generally uh, what you know a menu item should have is basically it should have a text definitely and then it should have an icon as well if required uh, something similar to you know drop down or a context menu or anything so which same menu uh, component which we can reuse to create all different components uh, such as buttons and all those things right so let me quickly create a text layer so I'll just say menu okay and I'll create a frame uh, but before that let me just you know drop down icon I'll just give it a name drop down icon and I'll create a component of it okay so my component is ready uh, we probably don't need feel here we can make it transparent yes so our uh, drop down icon is ready now let's create a frame so to create a frame again uh, there is a shortcut which you know uh, actually not the frame but the auto layout so we can use you know uh, shift a which basically creates an auto layout and it automatically adds a frame around the selection and then whatever objects you have selected basically creates an auto layout within the you know uh, based on the selection so now let's give it the name menu now this should also contains a drop down icon right also we need to create an component first but before creating component let's just uh, bring an instance of the drop down icon here so uh, how i'm bringing the instance i'm just you know uh, holding the option button or alt button and just dragging and dropping it and the same way we are just moving it in the frame okay so you just have to drop it on the frame and figma will automatically add that uh, selected object to the frame okay uh, so let me just get rid of the second icon uh, probably I'll just duplicate this uh, we need you know one more icon I'll show you why now let's uh, give it some color or let's have it uh, you know the black only as of now because we haven't created any styles so we'll be creating the styles as well and then we'll come back to this uh, navigation bar component and we'll apply those styles here now next part is uh, we need one more icon just to have it on the right hand side okay now i'll just uh, simply say menu now i'll show you one more trick how to create components right so let's say this is our uh, menu component and then we need two states of this one is uh, the default and other one is active we'll not take care of hover as of now okay so we have menu and then we have uh, we'll call it as default 
d e f a u l t default right and then i'll just duplicate this and i'll just rename this menu slash and i'll say this active okay now uh, oops yes active okay so i'll select both of them and now this time rather than you know creating a a component i'll say create component set so by this figma have created a single component called menu and in the same component it has added two variants okay alternatively we can add variants uh, as you know a property as well uh, to the component so that is also possible but we are already you know uh, ability to create multiple component sets quickly uh, then we should be using that feature where we can select multiple objects and create a component set out of it now uh, this is our default state this is our active state i'll just name uh, rename this property as state make sure you already give proper names because your names are uh, will be helpful when you are you know using those components in your design and that will help you to determine uh, you know which property you should be modifying so now we need to modify uh, the visibility of the icons and before that let's just uh, change the color of the you know active uh, uh, maybe let's make it red for now okay uh, or maybe we can go ahead with the icon color which we have chosen for the logo i'll just simply pick the same color yes now uh, we need to adjust the menu uh, the icons which we have created and uh, when i'm saying adjust the icons basically i'm saying you know at a time we will not use both of the icons but we are creating the component very flexible where you know we can have presiding or you know uh, uh, you can say like icon before or icon after in the easiest language so icon on the left icon on the right uh, which basically you know allows our component to be flexible enough where we can easily swap the properties and then we can you know get the icons on you know either of the side and we don't have to adjust the layout again and again so in the easiest way we can create you know uh, such components which are flexible enough to fit in any kind of design right so now let's select the entire component again there are multiple ways to do this you can select the individual layer and you can you know uh, toggle the uh, boolean property uh, from here uh, sorry the instance swap property from here or the you know boolean property uh, uh, for the visibility of the layer but as we are going to apply it to both of the icons uh, on the left hand side and then both of the icons on the right hand side so i'll just select my parent component and then i'll create you know properties here so i'll go to properties i'll create boolean property i'll say icon left okay so as this is a drop down uh, menu or you know menu item uh, mostly it would be on the right hand side of the text so i'll just say by default it is false icon on the left okay and now i'll create one more property same we'll be creating a boolean property and this time we'll say icon right okay and uh, let's keep it true by default okay let's create the properties now it's time to assign those properties to the objects now we'll be selecting you know both of the icons and then uh, i'll click this uh, you know uh, apply boolean property switch and then i'll select icon left okay and then i'll select uh, both of the icons on the right hand side and then i'll uh, repeat the same step and i'll say icon right this time now you'll be seeing my icon on the left is hidden because uh, if we remember we have set the default uh, property to false so that's why you know it is not visible it will only visible if user manually switches that on so how user will be switching that on i will just you know create a component uh, instance here and now you can say we have state where we can change it uh, from default to active or from active to default right and then uh, you can you know change the icon left property using this switch so when we switch it on it basically enables my icon when i switch it off it basically hides my icon so i can do it with both of the icons right so by this we have created a, a menu component uh, or you know a menu item component which basically allows us to create the icons uh, 
dynamically you know uh, in whichever direction we want okay now let's uh, think of the next property which we need to create to this icon so that property is basically the text change the you know actual text which user should be able to change it uh, or you know designer should be able to change it while designing the layouts so how we'll be doing that again the same way we'll be selecting the entire component we'll be creating a property uh, from the you know same place so let's create a property this time we'll be creating a text property why because we are going to apply it to the text and user will able to change the text uh, just by entering it into the uh, input field on the properties right so i'll say uh, menu text okay and uh, let's give it menu item okay i'll create a property now again i'll select you know both of the uh, text layers make sure you are selecting the text layers then only you will able to apply the text properties or else you know uh, figma will not allow you to apply those text properties which we have created so i'll go here and i'll select menu text same way just you know uh, it is applied from a different place uh, because it is a text related property so we can assign it from the text so i'll say menu item now uh, when i select my component you can see you know there is one more property added menu text where i can simply change it let's say drop down menu and it will update the text right and now you can create multiple copies of this and then you can say no drop down for uh, for same okay and then you can just switch it off so you are using the same component now if you have to you know make any changes you just have to make you know changes in this component and uh, rest of the instances will automatically adopt to the changes which we have created okay now uh, i guess uh, we are good with the menu item component now next component we need to create is the profile icon okay uh, so when we see profile icon uh, for now let's just you know uh, have it maybe just an ellipse or uh, we can you know explore a plugin i guess i haven't used it recently but let's search it from here so how to search a plugin basically you know you have to go to this uh, widgets menu kind of thing uh, where you know you can see all your assets uh, components plugins widgets right let's go to the plugins and now let's search for avatar okay add random user avatars to your design now let's just run this and it has you know automatically created a circle and it has added this ellipse to the uh, you know to the image to the circle or to the ellipse you can say if you're not satisfied with the plugin you can run it again or uh, you can use any other plugin as well which basically generates the icon so let's say uh, let's try this another plugin ui avatar okay so it is giving us a couple of you know popular choices which already has been generated you can see uh, under you know there are different uh, uh, categories they have alien cartoon abstracts and you know robot so you can choose uh, any of the icon which are any of the fees which you love and let's just you know go ahead with uh, maybe you know this girl okay and it has just replaced uh, or just you know added the image to the same uh, ellipse which we had selected i'll just remove the second image because i don't like that personally so i'll just get rid of this and it has created a 100 by 100 pixels of the you know uh, left so we were somewhere around the same so let's keep it as it is for now or uh, maybe we can uh, lower it a little bit 80 by 80 okay now avatar menu or you know the uh, the profile menu is uh, profile icon is ready now again we can create a component of it but uh, i don't feel we need to create a component for this we can create a component uh, for the notification bell icon now uh, let's quickly create a bell icon how we'll be creating a bell icon uh, probably let's create a polygon first a triangle first and then create an ellipse okay 
something like this and then I'll adjust the corners and now you can see it is starting to getting you know it, it has started to get the shape of the bell I'll just kill it a little bit up I'll select this entire icon I'll just change the feel to a black one okay and now let's just you know quickly add a small circle at top of the bell so our bell icon is ready right so you can uh, <coughs> scale it down a little bit if you want to you know uh, trick it accordingly you can make the changes okay uh, you can adjust you know the dimensions of uh, these objects based on your need and uh, we may refer any other you know icon and we can create it using pen tool as well but uh, it is good for me you may you know select all of them together and then just weld it now just if you want to you know add some extra details you may create uh, you know some uh, some extra shapes into it and trim it out and that will add some you know uh, lines in between uh, but I am you know good with this icon for now let me select and check the dimensions okay it is good 32 by 34 so let's keep it you know uh, height wise 32 okay or maybe just uh, make it width 20 uh, 32 I guess that's okay uh, now okay, why it is not updated this that was updated my corner radius is too much so that has to be reduced okay yes um, now our uh, icon is ready but uh, we cannot you know just go ahead with this icon because we need to uh, uh, first let's create a frame again that is going to be a 32 by 32 uh, pixels frame okay and I'll just call it bell and I'll move this bell in this frame now you can determine you know uh, what exactly dimensions you need right uh, I'll just align it at the middle of the frame I like the center of the frame you can use these uh, alignments as well now I'll just rename this bell slash read and let's create a copy of this and then let's say bell slash unread okay and in the unread icon we'll simply create a, a dot a circle with a red color so it basically gives us a unread bell icon okay now I'll select both of them and I'll create a component okay and oops uh, I'll create a component set right so it has created a component set uh, with name bell and it has properties read unread and then we can say state same way which we did for the menu item now uh, okay I guess I missed to remove the background so I'll just hide that and when you bring any of the instance of this bell icon you can see it has you know read and read two states okay now uh, our notification icon is ready now let's uh, work on the last part which is menu icon and menu icon should not be you know much of the challenging part so I'll just create a quick you know three rectangles and probably just add some corner radius to it and then give it a nice black color okay and then again same way let's create a frame of a 32 by 32 pixel right now move all of them into the frame adjust the scale adjust the spacing accordingly align it to the middle vertically and horizontally okay 
great you may uh, you know play with the uh, designs uh, as per your you know choice as per your creative vision uh, you can you know maybe track it like this or you can have it like uh, you know the the middle line is a bit smaller it is up to you how you want uh, to you know design your icons we are just you know trying to be as much as standard as possible so let's say menu icon and now create a component of it again uh, we missed to hide the field okay i'll just remove that now we'll just organize these things a little bit so we'll have it somewhere here we'll have the logo and we'll keep all the icons together we can create multiple pages uh, when we'd be you know uh, if we have to create the entire design system but as of not uh, as of now we are not creating a design system we are just exploring you know uh, what are the best practices we should be following while creating the components and what are the potentials a figma component has i still feel this is a bit larger i'll go to somewhere around maybe 65 okay great now the part is uh, we have to build the complete navigation bar we have created all the required assets uh, to you know design a navigation bar now it is part to actually you know uh, create the navigation bar so now to create a nav bar definitely we are going to create a responsive navigation bar which will automatically adopt in you know uh, your devices even like uh, let's say this is my mobile right and let's say this is my desktop okay uh now to start with let's create a frame uh, what is the width of our desktop it is 1728 so let's just you know to start with let's create a frame which has width of almost you know the same as our desktop okay and give it a name nav bar i'll keep the height uh, somewhere around 120 or maybe you know 100 pixels uh, but let's keep it 120 for now let's add an auto layout give it a fixed width for now give it a fix height as well we may change these properties uh, as needed okay so now our basic auto layout setup is ready we'll just uh, do it a uh, center aligned auto layout now we'll start uh, adding our you know uh, components to the navigation bar so let's start with the logo i'll create an instance of the logo and put it here then i'll just bring a menu item and then i'll bring the profile icon okay i guess uh, we have created a component here but let's create a component in case you know we want to change the profile icon we can come back and easily uh, you know modify that so let's see a profile icon actually my plan was to create a single you know a uh, component including profile icon bell icon and menu icon together but let's not do it that way let's create uh, all you know the individual icons and let's bring in the bell icon okay what else we need uh, and the menu icon definitely menu icon we don't need in uh, desktop we need it in the mobile only so i'll not just you know uh, bring it in as of now now i'll adjust i'll start adjusting the spacing right so we may use variables uh, but you know if you have a free plan you may not able to use the variables but if you have a teams plan you can start using the variables so how to use variables i'll quickly you know show you how to create the variables and how to use the variables and we'll be using variables today uh, just to create you know the responsive uh, navigation bar you can do it without variables as well variables are just to you know determine the width or you know determine the device uh, on the run time and it will automatically adopt uh, based on the you know frame which we have but uh, we'll be using variables for now i'll show you both of the ways okay so let's create first a uh, very first variable uh, which will be you know doing for the uh, spacing right uh, definitely we don't need variables for spacing but i'm just showing it to you how to create a variable and how to use it so let's click on this local variable uh, you actually have need to you know deselect everything so when you deselect everything you can see local variables now just click on this uh, local variables button and then click on create variables so i'll create a number variable for now and that is going to be our uh, default spacing okay and we'll be using same uh, uh, everywhere 
so for now let's have it maybe 16 pixels okay I'll close this for now and now I'll select my uh, nav bar uh, 8 we haven't created it into a component we'll do it shortly and now we'll select the variable from here so how we are selecting the variable you have to basically click on this you know uh, this button in the text field uh, for the spacing just select this and then say default spacing we'll do it for the both uh, both of the you know uh, spacing horizontal and vertical will be using same variable now when we change the default spacing to maybe 18 or you know 32 pixels it will automatically adjust the spacing uh, based on this variable and we don't need to come back here and adjust it to each and every component or each and every instance we can just do it and as at, uh, at a single place in our variables right you just have to modify it here let's say just you know do it 160 and see it has automatically added 160 pixels uh, right I'll, I'll just go back to 16 for now i know this is a bit longer lesson but uh, definitely you know this is the most important uh, you know uh, most important uh, factor like creating the components is one of the very very important aspect of uh, figma design and know how to modularize your design and create a reusable components so it will take your time only once but then once you create the components you can just reuse the components for any of your design projects you just have to modify you know couple of things and your entire design system will be ready to reuse redesign or you know uh, anything which you want to do with it so now we are uh, good uh, here now i'll show you one more technique where you know we can adjust the spacings manually now how to adjust spacings manually definitely you know uh, you can change it from here but no i don't want to do it uh, like this so i want to keep a fixed uh, spacing in each and every item here uh, within the auto layout but now i want you know spacing only uh, between menu items and my profile icon and bell icon first i'll move it to the uh, left how to do that let's just you know simply select it and hit your arrow key so if you have to move it to the left just hit the left arrow key so it will automatically you know change the position uh, in the auto layout so you just have to you know easily you can swap the uh, positions uh, very quickly in the auto layout so now let's uh, move the bell icon here now i'll create a rectangle in the auto layout so when I'm creating rectangle, you can see, you know, my uh, component is automatically, uh, uh, you know, adapting and uh, the two items where bell icon and profile picture is automatically going to the right because uh, it is occupying this much of space. So what we'll be doing here, which will be changing the width of this uh, newly created rectangle to the fill container. So now we have, you know, uh, basically we know uh, this is going to be fixed. This is going to be fixed. This is going to be fixed and the only space uh, is going to be uh, variable is basically this rectangle and to you know uh, accommodate that what we are doing is we are just creating a rectangle and we are just giving it fill container so now i'll show you uh, what it is doing i'll just resize it uh, or duplicate it and i'll just you know scale it down so even if i'm scaling it down you know every time my menu item and you know uh, the bell icon or profile icon are you know sticking to the position it is always on the right it is always on the left right so i'll just get rid of this for now and we'll definitely hide that later let's keep it uh, as it is for now now let's create a couple of menu items okay i'll just duplicate it and uh, that's it i don't need drop down for all of them so i'll select them and just i'll uh, you know hide the icon right okay so our basic setup is done now let's say you would say i don't want to you know uh, 24 pixel spacing in you know all of the menu items but i want it uh, between the logo and menu item so now we can create this you know more complex auto layout we can select the nested frames and then again we can create an auto layout within it okay so now you can see we have uh, menus we have logo we have spacer and then we have bell icon and then profile icon now you can again go and uh, refine the properties for this internal or the nested auto layout let's say i want only you know 16 pixels here so i can simply uh, go ahead and do it like that okay so my menu items are ready 
now what we have to do is we have to create a component out of it but before that let's create a navigation bar component for the mobile as well so i'll say navbar slash mobile uh, sorry desktop okay and i'll create a navbar slash mobile component in mobile i don't want menu items to be visible so first of all i'll get rid of them uh and i probably need this but i need the menu icon button so i'll add the button on the right hand side only because we are already having you know a couple of buttons there so just add it there as well and let's see you know what is the width of uh, our mobile which is uh, somewhere around 393 pixels so i'll just select this and i'll see 393 pixels again you can create variables and you can use those variables here as well which will basically you know automatically uh, determine the width uh, you know automatically de determine the frame and based on the frame it will adjust the width but uh, we are just you know keeping the very simple but uh, a really usable component so i'll just manually give it the you know width of uh, 393 pixels that really doesn't matter now we are already creating the you know menu so we don't even need to show the profile icon up front visible so i'll first of all get rid of this i need notifications always visible and again i'll keep the same layout i'll have the menu at you know uh, right most size uh, side and then uh, bell icon in the middle and then same my spacer is here okay now we have created you know the basic setup or the basic structure of the navigation bar so i'll select both of uh, the spacers and i'll just reduce the opacity of them to zero okay so uh, there are two ways one is you know get rid of the color uh, that you can do other way is you know basically change the opacity and make it to the zero so that is also doable uh, which of the approach uh, you feel you can go ahead with that i generally you know prefer to have uh, you know change the opacity and to do the opacity changes very quickly you can just use your number keys on the keyboard and simply you know press that number so let's say if you want opacity to 50% you can just you know hit 5 on your keyboard and it will change the opacity of the selected object to 50% now let's uh, make it zero so just you have to hit the zero and it will uh, make it you know uh, like uh, there is a trick guys so when you have to make 100% you have to use zero and even if you have to make 0% you have to use zero so it is depending upon you know uh, the current state it will automatically detect probably you might need to hit zero twice or thrice uh, if you are not getting you know uh, if you are getting 100% and you are expecting 0% so just hit it twice and it will automatically make it zero right now our uh, navigation bar design is ready i'll select both of them and i'll now create a component set so now i have created my component set uh, where i have navbar and i have a uh, uh, navbar for the desktop and navbar for the mobile now uh, we will you know rename this property and this time we will say device because we will be using uh, variables So let's quickly create a variable, and this time uh, we'll be creating a string variable, and we'll say it device. Make sure the name which you are giving, uh, uh, the name which you are giving to your variable is, you know, exactly matching with the property uh, name which you have defined here. So I'll say, let's say, copy this, uh, just you know, to make sure we are not making any spelling errors, and then uh, the name which we have defined to the component, let's just you know, use the same name here as well. now uh, we are done for the desktop now we need to create one more property or one more value for the uh, mobile so how will be doing that we'll be just creating one mode here and in this mode uh, in this mode i'll just you know copy this mobile property and i'll just paste it here and again i need to you know change the names for the modes as well right uh, because uh, even you know that is going to be our uh, factor where you know we will able to switch if we are on the desktop if we are on the mobile and based on the mode figma will choose the appropriate uh, property and then it will assign that property to the variable which uh, we would be assigning the variable to the uh, actual component now to assign the variable to component basically what you have to do is uh, you need to you know create a copy of the component and it will just you know uh, move it to the desktop frame for now i can just align it to top quickly and uh, where we have you know this device property 
we'll select and we'll say uh, device right and we'll just simply uh, create a copy and move this here as well and this time I'll select the same uh, thing and I'll uh, go to this uh, change mode and I'll say mobile this time now if you see uh, based on my you know device it has automatically determined if uh, I have to use a mobile variant or if I have to use a desktop variant so with this you know you can uh, create more complex components and you can use modes but make sure you know uh, you have a paid version or a teams version of the figma then only you will able to use modes or else uh, still you can do it manually as well so i'll uh, show you how to do it manually i'll again uh, bring one more copy here and this time uh, you know instead of automatically detecting that i'll go ahead and i'll manually change the property to mobile so now if you see uh, my same component without even using the you know the variables i can still create a dynamic uh, component which will adapt to the width of your device uh, based on you know uh, just we are just changing the variant or you know we are making some changes into the properties right so uh, okay so our basic setup is ready now uh, now you know again we are missing like how uh, you know i can change the menu item we have created the you know menu uh, item component where we allow user to add the uh, menu name but uh, it is again you know there is a complexity right i have to uh, you know go in deep i have to select you know i have to double click or i have to go into the layer panel and i have to find the menu and then i have to you know select the actual menu component not just the navigation bar so now we'll be exposing all those uh, you know properties of the menu button to our navigation bar component how we can do that so we'll select the navigation bar okay i'll go to the properties and now if you see it basically gives us you know uh, ability to expose properties from nested instances when you click on this it basically asks you which uh, properties or you know for which components the properties which you want to nest so logo we haven't created any property so i'll not just select that for now i'll select menu uh, all of the menu bars and i'll select the bell icon okay and i'll simply close that now when you select the uh, the actual you know navigation bar you can see it has given me all the uh, menus uh, or you know the menu instances here and you can you know simply create uh, let's say my first is going to be active state okay and let's say no drop down and i'll say dashboard okay and then uh, let's say my second is going to be default uh, let's say it is a drop down menu maybe for uh, products okay and then let's say we have a third menu which sees about us okay so now you are just selecting the component and you are just you know adding all those menus very quickly just uh, from the properties now let's say you uh, want to show something where you know the bell has a notification you just have to change it to unread okay so now we have created a component which basically allows you to select all the properties just by you know selecting the component and all the nested properties are exposed now when you see you know uh, we don't have any menu item visible here so figma doesn't show all those properties here it just shows you know uh, whichever the visible properties right so by this uh, we have created a cool navigation bar component uh, which can be you know further extended with more uh, possibilities using variables but as of now whatever we have created is good to go ahead and you can you know start using this i'll just change the color a little bit it is not visible on the white i'll just make it a little bit of gray okay uh, it is just a personal preference but yeah now you can see we have created the school uh, navigation bar component in next chapter we will you know uh, start exploring more uh, things such as you know styles in the figma and we'll see how to create the styles and how to uh, use those styles and uh, basically apply them to our components apply them to different uh, objects okay so let's wrap up this chapter here and let's uh, go to the next chapter yes now let's start with the next chapter where we'll be creating styles and then we'll be applying those styles to the components which we have created uh, that is definitely not the way you know we should be following but i have created components uh, uh, because i feel that is very important uh, aspect of the you know uh, figma design practices 
styles can be any ways you know created and uh, generally we should be starting with the you know creating text styles and color styles first and then start creating the components so uh, i'll you know quickly show you how to create the text styles to create a text style basically you need uh, just you know uh, you need to type a text anywhere right and then let's say uh, we are creating a style for let's say header you know or uh, heading 1 or h1 you can say h1 heading okay and uh, we are using poppins uh, as our you know uh, default font and let's say uh, we want it to be bold okay and now let's create one more for uh, h2 heading and this time i'll not use bold i'll probably go with the semi bold or uh, maybe a little bit lighter one and then i'll go for uh, 24 right i guess uh, no i should uh, if i'm using 32 here probably i should be having 28 here okay and then based on that you know same way we can create all the text styles so let's say i'll create a uh, maybe body text so first i'm defining all my text which you know i need uh, to design the entire application i'll use a regular one and uh, sorry i'll use a regular one and then i'll uh, select the font size as uh, 14th okay now we'll be converting them into the reusable style so how to create a style just select the text which you want to use as a style go to the text uh, and you know these uh, four dots up here uh, which is basically style click on this it will ask you to you know uh browse libraries if you uh you know have already created any design library you can browse them and you can you know locate those libraries and it will uh, basically enable that library for the file and you can choose uh, styles from that libraries but we are creating it from scratch so we'll create a new style and click on the first uh, this you know plus button create style now it will automatically take all the properties which we have defined to these uh texts which you can again modify here uh, like from go to the show uh show options you can see you know we are using font as poppins we are using bold and we are uh, giving the size of 32 pixels now you have to give a name okay h1 uh heading right and then you can give a description maybe you know a largest l a r g e s t largest heading okay and then create a style the same way you have to create it you know uh, for all the text which you need so let's say this is going to be my h2 i'll again repeat the same uh, process h2 and i'll say you know uh, i don't have to always go to the description uh, or the options because i know you know uh, i have already created them as i want and i just have to you know give the name and the description description is optional you can skip it so let's create a style okay and then uh, same goes for the uh, last one as well like you know text style and then let's create a body text body text okay so uh, with this you know uh, we need to at least create around you know 8 uh, to 10 different styles at least like six headings then a paragraph button and link all those different styles we need to think of right so uh, just to you know quickly do these uh, stylings actually we have this plugin uh, which we have developed project setter by ux mate okay it is uh, in both versions uh, you will be only seeing the published version i'll put the link in the description so i'll just open this plugin okay now uh, the cool thing about this plugin is basically you can select i'll just uh, keep them as it is uh, or I'll, we can simply get rid of these now you can see you know we have created those text styles here i'll uh, simply remove all those text styles uh, i can you know uh, go ahead and uh, manually you know uh manually right click them on and, uh, and i can see uh, delete style but if i have bulk you know or the multiple styles i can simply clear all the styles from here uh make sure uh, you know uh you are only using if you are aware that you know uh, you don't need the styles which you already have in the document because it will remove all the styles and that is not undoable so make sure you uh, hit clear styles very uh, you know uh with very precautions so i'll just say clear styles it will remove all my styles right now i'll be generating all the styles which we have created using like the uh, poppins font right so i'll say poppins okay and uh, probably i'll use 36 pixels as my largest heading size 
and then i'll say generate styles okay now if you see uh, this plugin how you know automatically generated all those text styles which manually if you have to generate then probably you know it would take almost um, 30 to 35 minutes to generate you know all those text styles because you have to create all the text you have to define the parameters for them then you have to manually create all the styles give the name give the description now if you see you know this has already defined the name for the heading this has already defined the description for the heading uh, the font size and you know uh, the font which we have defined right and if you want to still go ahead and modify something you can still come to the style you can click on these you know adjustment parameters of the style and then uh, you can change uh, it is uh, it based on your you know uh, your uh, specific look which you want to achieve so for example i uh, you know i want my h1 and h2 to be a little bit bolder than rest of the headings i can still uh, do it okay and now you know all uh, your h1 h2 h3 uh, up to h6 then we have button text large we have body text we have small text we have link text we have a uh, form label text your navigation menu text so everything is kind of predefined and you know uh, you will get everything just with a single click right so i'll just uh, keep them as it is for now now we'll talk about color styles right now to create color styles again uh, there is you know same way uh, and definitely we are you know expanding the features of the application uh, sorry this figma plugin to generate the color styles as well it is still uh, in the development mode but soon it will be ready so keep uh, checking that space uh, keep checking the updates for the plugin so i'll just randomly select you know a uh, few colors so probably i'll go uh, ahead with the same blue color which we have used for our logo uh, for say and i'll probably you know uh, maybe use uh, some you know uh, some sheets of the same color me or maybe i can go ahead with a complete contrast as well so the contrast would fall somewhere around you know orange uh, palette okay and then uh, maybe let's create one for the success uh, green okay uh, a little bit on the blues yes you can change the brightness uh, okay uh, good to go ahead now we have created 1 2 3 4 colors for now let's say and now we have to define all the styles for these four colors right so uh, definitely as of now we cannot create bulk styles uh, from the figma we have to do it manually until unless you are using any utilities or any plugins so let's manually create all the four styles i'll show how to create the uh, color styles so the same way you know you have to just uh, create a couple of blocks or the rectangles with the colors which you want to you know be in your palette now go to your field and click on this style same way you will be creating it you know uh, using the plus button as we created for the text so let's quickly create you know uh, now there is one quick uh, thing which you need to notice basically there are two options do you want to create a style or do you want to create a variable if you are creating a variable it will just you know create a variable uh, with the colors which you would be defining but if you create a style then it will be creating a style same as which we created for the text style and we'll go ahead with the styles because uh, variables are definitely you know uh, in the paid version and uh, you cannot run the prototypes when you apply variables to the uh, you know thing so we'll go ahead with the styles for now and i'll give it a name primary okay create style same way i'll go here i'll create one more style that is going to be my secondary right and uh, in the same way i can have warning maybe right warning and the last thing is i'll be creating a style for success okay uh and let's create the styles now all our styles are defined and you can see you know those styles have been applied to the uh you know those blocks as well now we'll be seeing how to use those styles which we have created right and when you deselect everything you can see all your local styles here uh, uh if you you know go ahead with the paid version you can publish those styles in a design library and you can use that library in any other files but as of now uh definitely we'll go ahead with the local styles only 
now you can create local styles on a single page and then you can reuse those styles on any other pages as well that really doesn't matter so uh, what you can do is you know uh, just to start up with uh, you can create a local style uh, maybe you know uh, the entire style guide or a design system on a page and then rest of the pages can be your application okay i'll just delete this we don't need that as it uh, as of now so now let's see how to use these styles which we have created again we'll quickly arrange them and we'll just move them above the components which we have created now first let's apply those styles to the uh, you know logo component so now i'll select the logo and rather than you know using these uh, this fill color uh, manually i'll just again go to the same style option and now it will ask me you know which style you want to choose let's see i go at for warning for now now you can see my logo is you know uh, with the warning color and wherever i have used the logo it is automatically updated with that color so i don't have to manually go everywhere and change that uh, that's you know the biggest benefit of uh, having components so we'll switch it back to the primary now let's apply the text style uh, to the menu item uh, you know the menu bar and we'll be again applying the text style using the same way you just have to click on the styles here and now you need to select which text uh, style you want so based on the uh, font which we have defined uh, it says you know you should be having 18 pixels or somewhere around that okay now uh, let's say 18 pixel for now and let's uh, change the color as well and uh, rather than having the primary color probably i'll go ahead with a uh, you know secondary shade uh, which is a bit darker than our primary color right now you can see wherever i have this uh, active button it has automatically adopted with the new color i'll just show you with you know some other color so you can easily visualize okay right now when i change it to the warning it is automatically updated everywhere so so far we have learned how to create the components how to create the styles uh, it could be text styles it could be fill style right now uh, from the next chapter we would be uh, going into the much details of the ux design principle and uh, will not you know go into uh, each and every ux design principle this is not a ux design course but before we will be you know starting with actual yfms we'll quickly touch a couple of uh, ux design principles that is going to be more on the theoretical part of the uh course it has nothing to do with the figma it is more of the evex and the principles of it so let's uh, catch in the next chapter meanwhile uh, don't forget to subscribe because that will keep you you know uh, no subscription will not keep you more updated but uh, you just need to hit that bell icon as well next to the subscribe button so to hit that bell icon you must subscribe to the channel and uh, That's it then yeah uh, subscribe now hit that bell icon don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't did so far because if you're still following me uh, in this long 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 uh, crash course then definitely you are getting interested into the designs yes and as i said you'd be master of figma uh, by end of this course so yes uh, let's jump into the next chapter very quickly uh, and let's start with you know some basic ux principles and then uh, after that we'll be starting into the actual design part so in this chapter we will explore ux design principles and best practices to you know uh, follow which will help you to create interfaces that not only look good but also you know provide an uh, exceptional user experience because uh, when we talk about user experience you know uh, you need to make sure that whatever designs you are doing uh, those are basically where you know uh, so as the term itself says uh, you know user basically user has to be you know a uh, center plot of your entire design right so whatever you would be designing that is uh, around the user right so the features which you are thinking you know the functionality the uh, the application the product or anything which you are going to do anything which you are going to put on the screen is basically you know for the users because uh, end of the day they are going to use your products so that's why you know in ux design uh, we put everything you know uh, around the users our uh, focus always should be on the users and you know uh, getting the things right for them so definitely we don't know everything about the users when we uh, explore or when you start you know designing the uh the application or you know when we start with the actual design process but the with the time you know you start drawing some uh 
basic wireframes about the user when i'm saying wireframe i'm not referring to the actual design wireframes it is more about you know the personas uh, which we create it is more about the user research which we create and slowly we you know start shaping up these you know uh, odd uh, shapes to you know a well refined uh, user and you know well defined user needs and uh, based on that you know we can define the actual uh, actual features which we need to have in our design and based on that we can you know start actual ux design uh, practice or the actual ux design process of the application so when we say the uh, ux design or when we say the principles of you know ux design basically what does it mean right so basically whatever we are going to do is uh, is you know the thing which we want to make you know our users happy right so very core goal or you know very simple uh, terminology of the ux design is you know make your users well uh, you know make your users happy uh, when you know they are using your products and how we can make them happy uh, it is very straight forward you know uh, if you make something valuable then you know uh, whoever is going to use that will uh, definitely be happy because he is just looking or he or she is just looking for you know the things which are giving you know value to the user so when i'm saying you know uh, we need to design uh, the products which will return the value to the user then does it mean that we only need to think about users no because if we only think about the users then what about the you know uh, revenue of the business right so how a business will survive how they will keep on you know uh, following all these features which basically to provide these features they need to you know uh, spare some uh, bucks on them or you know spend some money to uh, build that infrastructure you know to build the services to build the uh, things around it which user is you know basically uh, utilizing so the business is again very core uh, you know uh, part of the ux design process so when i say business it is not necessarily you know the organizations the companies it is anyone who is providing the services or who is you know providing this product to the users to use so basically you know user is our center you know user is our center of attraction you can say in the ux design process but if we only have users then who is going to give all these services right so uh, no one will be there right uh, because no one will give uh, anything for free to you at least in this world so to get something back you know uh, if i am giving something to the user i'll expect something back from the users right so let's say uh, so let's say you know this is my business right and which is uh, investing in the ux uh, design or in, which is investing in a product uh, for example then you know this business uh, i'm not sure what i'm drawing maybe uh, a a company or you know and factory right so let's say this is my business right and uh, which is giving uh, some products it could be anything when i'm saying product it could be a digital product right it could be a physical product right so when i'm giving those products to the user then i'm spending uh, some money on you know it is not necessarily money but we can say i'm spending some currency right so when we say currency it could be the manpower it could be the efforts which i'm uh, putting into development of the product uh, it could be actual cost of the uh, you know uh, the 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 manufacturing process it could be the cost of product development like si life cycle it could be anything right so when i'm investing something right to give a xyz product to the user then i'll expect something back from the user now when i uh, expect something back from the user then you know uh, this is what your first thing is you need to define the goal uh, or you know goals of your project so when i say goals of the project it is basically you know uh, we are defining what we are giving to the user and what we are expecting in the return so that would be your end goal right so uh, because that is something where you know business is getting revenue or business is getting profit or you know business is getting it could be brand loyalty it could be uh, monetary benefit it could be uh, social awareness of the brand it could be you know publicity of the brand uh, it could be anything which you as a you know a service provider expecting from the users so 
when uh, i say ux design basically i can simply say you know you have user needs on a plate right and then you have uh, business goals right so basically uh, these are two plates and which you know you need to equally balance them out and that's what you know your ux design is so when i say ux design basically i am balancing the needs of the user right needs of the user and i'm uh, managing uh, the the business goals and i'm finding a you know sweet spot which is balancing both of the things together where you know my needs and uh, business goals are equally important for me as a ux designer and i'm you know trying my best to fulfill all the user needs as well as i'm trying to maintain what you know business uh, is expecting out of the project right so uh, so when we you know start any project uh, for ux design make sure you are uh, basically you know putting the user at the center of the place then you are putting your business uh, and then you are you know defining your product uh, project goal very clearly which will help you to you know again quantify the efforts which you are putting into the ux design right you can come back to the goals at a later point of time in uh, at your you know different milestones of the product development life cycle and you can check the progress which we are making in the design the feedback which are getting from the users the you know response which we are getting from the users is it what we have defined as our product goal is it what we have defined as our project goal is it what we are anticipating if yes then yes we are on the right track we can you know quantify the efforts which we are spending on the ux design but if we are on you know if we are not on the same track and if we are let's say diverging from the track then basically we need to think okay what we made wrong here so we were on the track at least till this point uh, this you know this milestone but uh, when i'm checking at this milestone i am you know uh, not on the path i have deviated from my goal then you have you know the ability okay what went wrong from here okay everything was you know as per plan till this milestone and it goes very well till this milestone and then something went wrong and it is deviated from the path so why it is deviated uh, then you need to figure out okay why it is deviated then do you need to change your milestones as well or was it an error or this was something which wasn't defined earlier or that wasn't you know uh, assumed earlier or something has you know changed the market at all uh, it it could be you know in the positive direction it could be in the negative direction but we need to you know make sure that okay this is something where we have started right and this is something we want to reach so this is my final goal or you know the target where i want to reach and meanwhile i have different milestones and during those milestones i am always keeping an eye right i am always keeping an eye on the goal okay so this is what uh, my business goal is and am i uh, reaching out to the goal or not right so this is something you always need to make sure that's why you have to define your goal and that i would say the first principle uh, of the ux design right it cannot be a principle but uh, it is basically you know uh, first and very important uh, aspect which you need to make sure while you are starting any project okay now uh, let's go to the you know uh, the next part where you know uh, how we are basically making things which you know user will love so as of now we have seen users are you know the the center part right but something you know uh, something which uh, let's say we have to make you know useful or you know valuable to the user right something which i want to make sure that my users are liking a lot right uh, then i need to make sure i'm making the things which are kind of you know valuable for them because if something is valuable for me then <clears throat> because if something is valuable for me then and then only i'll go and you know i'll be ready to pay the uh, you know cost or you know i'll ready to pay the money i'll i'll be you know sharing that with my friends i'll be basically you know uh, striving to use that product only if i feel the product is kind of you know valuable for me so when our user is 
uh, satisfied when our user is in you know, happy definitely business will gain the uh, benefit out of it and to make our users happy we need to give them what is valuable for them right so uh, definitely if you want to check you know how to find all these things there are different frameworks where you can uh, figure out you know uh, what is something uh, valuable for the user you may you know start with the uh, user research where you can ask to the actual users or in a set of users where you can perform user interviews you can uh, go ahead and uh, perform surveys which will let you know you know more about the user needs and what basically adds value to the user but end of the day we need to design something which is valuable for the user now when we say uh, we have to design something which is valuable for the user then you know uh, then how uh, we would be basically doing that right so uh, to do this uh, what you have to do is basically you know you need to figure out how something can be valuable for the user now to figure out that basically you know there is uh, there are you know already has been a lot of research and in in ux basically you know we have this uh, very uh, very nice uh, honeycomb basically which uh, gives you you know all about uh, something which makes valuable for the user so to add value to any uh, anything there are you know uh, different uh, you can say uh, six uh, aspects right that's why it is a honeycomb so there are six different aspects uh, which is you can think as a piece of puzzle as well right so when you want to make something uh, very valuable very important for the user then you need to think of all these six puzzles uh, this uh, six pieces of the puzzle which makes something valuable so how uh, you know we make something valuable so we'll start with the first piece which is basically usable so we need to design something which is usable so when i'm saying usable uh, you know the product which you are uh, developing the you know product which you are designing that has to be you know passed through the usability testings that has to be passed through you know uh, the the basic things uh, which actually making that product usable so when i'm saying usable uh, you know there could be uh, products let's say you know um, what can i say as an example let's say you have a, a a door right okay let's say you have a door and it has lock okay and it has uh, it has a lock uh, and where you know you can uh, plug in your key and lock unlock the door but let's say uh, accidentally you know this lock is inside the door not from the outside then when uh, you have to open or close door you don't have any way or any access to you know open or close the door because the lock is fitted inside of the door so with that you know this door is no more usable if i take you know the same example let's say you have a plan where let's say you created you know uh, three rooms uh, something like that right and uh, just you know uh, sake of the thing you created three rooms right you have one two three and uh, your doors uh, somewhere here right so if you create uh, such doors like uh, and maybe you know like this so if you have to you know access this second room you have to go through third go to first and go to second room let's say if this is locked then you cannot you know access the second room or you cannot you know uh use that second room so that is not useful right so uh you may you know define the structure in a way let's say you know you can have a door here you can have a door here and probably you may have a door here which way you know all uh, of the rooms are uh, or all of the doors are useful or you know there may be an example let's say you have a door here and you have a door here right so uh, i'll just uh, or i'll just you know uh let this and i'll redraw that same structure and let's say you know uh again like you have these rooms and let's say you create a door uh for this room which you know basically opens outside right and again let's you create a same door for this room as well right so now uh, when we say when you open any of the door out of uh, these two rooms you can only open one door at a time because if you open this it will uh, 
go here if you open this it will close or it will block the entrance of this room so with that uh, you know the door is there the product is there you know the way to enter the room is there but it is not useful right so if you design something like that then user has to you know scratch their mind every time when they have to you know go from one room to other room so what you can do is you can use the same uh, design you can use the same structure just make the doors you know which will open inside or you may use the sliding doors which will you know basically slide in and you can easily navigate through you know the rooms so the same way uh, you know the same structure we are just you know changing some decisions and making that product usable right now next thing is uh, making something desirable so it is not always like you know uh, if you make something usable then it is not necessarily that you know uh, people will use it let's say uh, if we take an example of uh, maybe a food item right and let's say you have a food item which is you know uh, in a rack right and when you look at the picture of this food item then it has you know something uh, something which is irrelevant or something which is you know not making sense at all or maybe it has let's say you know uh, a factory which is uh, giving a lot of smoke uh, out of it or maybe you know a car which is spending pollution and uh, th there's another product where you know you have a nice picture of uh, the food item itself right it could be anything it could be sweets it could be uh, any 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 other thing which you can imagine but let's say if you have these two different products of the same uh, or the two different designs or two different packaging for the same product definitely user will be you know uh, going ahead with this uh, picture where you know they have the actual uh, product photograph because that is initiating the desire or that is you know uh, some somehow more desirable than this other product where you know the image is not relevant to the actual product of uh, or you know the food item because it is not triggering the desire of the user so something which you know uh, you want to make valuable that also has to be desirable right so now we have usability uh, we have desirability now the third thing is basically the accessibility again we can go ahead with the same uh, same example which we had here so uh, you know uh, if you create the door structure like that uh, for the rooms right then if you are locking this room then you are you know blocking the access to this third room so you cannot you know enter th uh, to this third room because that has that has no access uh, to enter to the room uh, if we take you know the example in the digital product i'll just quickly get rid of these examples here so when we take an example of the uh, digital product so it is basically uh, let's say you have uh, five different pages okay let's say you have uh, five different pages and then you have one navigation bar and which has you know only uh, four buttons and let's say you are on the uh, first page right and it has four buttons which are basically wired to all the four other pages right now uh, when you switch your first page okay when you go to the second third fourth or fifth page you don't have any button to come back to this default page where you were because the navigation bar is designed in a way so in this case my first page is not no more accessible to me when we say accessible it is not directly related to the access accessibility uh, of the pages or of the elements it is also related with the you know uh, accessibility in terms of colors in terms of contrast in terms of you know uh, color blind blindness and all those things right so when we are making something accessible then we need to make sure that you know it is accessible by a wide range of users and you know then only that will add some value to the users okay now the next thing if we need to you know uh, consider is basically let's say uh, i gave you a very simple example and you know money is kind of more relatable to anyone so let's say you know uh, there are two banks okay one is internationally uh, reputed bank okay and other one is just something which is you know uh, newly established you never heard the name of this bank anywhere and something xyz for example right and let's say uh, this is offering okay uh, this is offering let's say 20% return if you invest for one year 
ओके एंड लेट्स से दिस इज ऑफरिंग 11 परसेंट रिटर्न ऑन वन ईयर फॉर द सेम अमाउंट ओके नाउ इफ यू सी यू नो दिस इज इंटरनेशनली रेप्यूटेड ब्रांच बैंक यू हैव हर्ट अबाउट दिस बैंक फ्रॉम अ लॉट ऑफ कस्टमर्स यू नो even if it is returning me the 11% but i know i have that assurity it will return my money back but if you go to this you know 20% return and uh, even if it is returning more but until and unless it is credible enough i'll not take the risk to pay uh, my you know hard earned cash to this xyz bank because i don't have credibility with them right and that's why the credibility is you know one of the very important aspect of ux design because you know your products uh, should add, you know have a credibility your brand should have a credibility then only user will you know trust on you so your brand needs to be trustworthy if you are making products which are trustworthy then only it will be you know uh, valuable to the users because if they don't have trust in you if they don't have trust in your brand then they will not come to your door they will not choose your product they will never ever you know uh, start using your products because that has to be credible so i guess that was accessible uh right and that was credible and now uh we we are good with let's say well uh, uh you know uh, something which is useful we are good with something which is desirable which is accessible which is credible but what if you know uh again let's take the same example but what if you know uh i uh, uh, i am on the map and i never ever could find this bank because it is you know uh, behind a wall which uh, which doesn't have any way or it doesn't have any indicator or it doesn't have any sign board or anything which will tell users okay this bank is here right so you are walking on the streets but you are not finding that bank at all and uh, that's why you will never ever invest in this bank because you don't know uh, uh, where it is you couldn't find it at first place so anything uh, which you want to be valuable that has to be findable right so it is not directly related to the product but uh, the different you know elements of the product let's say you know different uh, uh, you can say navigation you can say uh, first of all your product needs to be findable that's right uh, but we are assuming that you know user is already uh, you know on our application on our website for example but now uh, we need to make sure that user is liking the product user is loving the product and they are using it to get some value out of it so let's say uh, if we take the example uh, in you know the digital product design so let's say you are creating a website which is basically giving you knowledge about let's say investment in cryptocurrency okay so uh, if you have a website uh, which basically has uh, blogs on investment on cryptocurrency uh, but you know your first fold of page uh, has uh, you know let's say about us section or some hero image right and then uh, you have uh, let's say testimonials you have uh, some other sections but user is not able to find what they are looking for they are not able to find where your blogs are actually where is that uh, specific information which i am looking for so until and unless if user is not able to find that particular uh, you know uh, information that particular piece of information which they are looking for on your website then they will no more use your website they will simply jump off and they will go to somewhere else because there are thousands of other competitors who are offering you know the same or uh, some same sort of you know uh, information or same sort of functionality same sort of uh, things in the market and then you need to make sure that you know something which you are designing which is findable if you are solving a user's problem then that problem that the solution has to be findable by the user it is not necessarily that okay you are solving the problem but you are hiding it somewhere else it is not something which you have to kept in the locker right that has to be open in the market that has to be uh, you know on the eyes of the user you can say let's say uh, if even if you take a very simple example of writing a blog okay your blog is about let's say same example investment on the cryptocurrency then to make that blog successful uh, to make that blog interesting to make that blog engaging you need to make sure that you know the piece which user is looking for the information which user is looking for is clearly defined in the first fold of the application of the blog right it is uh, 
clearly you know uh, in nice and clean heading or it is uh, very well you know uh, styled in a way which is easily findable by the user if user you know find something which is kind of a hook for them if you know something which is uh, buying the first you know 30 seconds or you know the first uh, first fold of or the uh, grabbing you know the attention of the user in the first 5 uh, to 10 seconds then okay you are you know successful then if user is you know finding that information on your website then they will take all the efforts to scroll down to your you know different sections of the website because they know okay something which i am looking for is here do the each and every or the detailed information is not on the first fold definitely they can scroll down and they can find the more like find about the more information of it but at least when they are coming to your a uh, product when they are coming to your website when they are start using your product you know they need to get what they are looking for so the findability of your application the, uh, uh, has to be you know very well defined and uh, that's why you know we may create uh, a good information architecture we create the user journey uh, diagrams you know we create user scenario diagrams which basically help us to understand okay what user is why user is coming uh, on our product first of all and what they are looking for once you understand why what then you can easily do how so how is not a big thing first you need to understand why and then you need to understand what okay so uh, your uh, you know product has to be findable right or your design has to be findable and now we are uh, in, you know uh, uh, we have uh, taken about you know uh, usable desirable accessible credible findable uh, i guess that was useful and then the last thing is basically you know usable there is you know slight difference between usable and useful so uh, anything let's say you know a switchboard right uh, uh, it is usable because you can easily go ahead and switch on off the lights using the switchboard but what if there is no connection to that switchboard it is no more useful it is usable you can still go ahead and you know uh, on off it you can still use the switch but it is no more functioning because it is not you know uh, linked with the any wire so uh, if if i draw that example for you so let's say uh, uh, this is what you know your switch is where you can you know uh, make it on off let's say but this is your bulb right and the connection is broken somewhere or it is not at all right so you can see the connection is either not at all or it is broken somewhere so doesn't matter how many times you are you know uh, using the switch to uh, on off the light it won't function because it is not useful it is usable i can still interact with it i can use that but it is no more useful for me it is not serving the purpose then uh, doesn't matter if it is usable or not usable it is not serving the purpose then it is no more valuable for me or it is it is just you know scrap for me if that button is not working how i will you know turn on or turn off the light right if i cannot uh, switch on or switch off the light then that light is no more useful for me so i'm losing the purpose here and that's why you know this this slight difference between usable and useful so you need to make sure something is usable something is useful something is desirable accessible credible and findable you can find this honeycomb diagram uh, you know on uh, on on any uh, you just have to search uh, uh ux honeycomb and you can find thousands of variations of this you know uh, diagram where you can see how uh, you can make something valuable for the users right so uh and uh, i hope you know uh you are able to follow with me uh till this part of time uh but now you know uh, we have learned you know <laughs> what is uh, how something uh, we can make uh, valuable but now let's see uh how to basically you know practically do all those things so there are you no know, a uh, couple of uh, uh, there are you know a couple of things which you need to make sure uh, while you know designing something so uh, for example uh, you can you know think about the usability right so uh, usability basically focuses on how easy it is for the users to achieve their goals right so uh, when we say achieve their goals let's say i want to switch on the light right uh, for example then uh do i need to you know let's say uh this is my sofa right i'm sitting here okay uh this is a wall where i have a switch booth right and let's say uh there is my light 
okay now let's say i want to switch on the light this is a very simple goal right so uh, to achieve this very simple goal there are lots of ways uh, you can you know ask someone okay go ahead and switch on the light very simple you can um, you know stand up yourself go to the switch right and switch on the light light will uh, on like uh, light will switch on right so this is my very simple goal i want to switch on the light now to switch on the light there are lots of ways you can ask someone you can go ahead and switch it on yourself you may have a remote control you may have an alexa or a, a, a google home device you may have a built in iot uh, uh, with your application alexa stop i guess <laughs> when they called her name uh, she was just uh, speaking in the background i'm not sure if uh, it is audible in the uh, but yeah <laughs> in the recording but uh, basically yes uh, you may have google home you may use uh, i'll not say siri <laughs> again my uh, apple siri will uh, start speaking but yes basically there are lots of ways uh, to achieve your goal now being a ux designer your goal is how you can simplify the goal of the user right so when we say uh, simplify the goal uh, we need to be basically make sure you know we are focusing about the usability and when you when we say usability usability basically focuses on you know how easy it is something uh, for the users to achieve their goal uh, within your you know product or within your interface right now next thing is basically about clarity uh when we say clarity uh, it is you know one of the very key principle clarity basically ensures that you know your design is clear and easy to understand there is you know nothing something which is uh, hidden or you know which uh, uh, which is uh, let's say written in a sign language right so uh, user will not able to understand or let's say something uh, which is written in a uh, in a code language right user will not able to understand that let's say even if we take an example of uh, the operating system itself you know computer uh, talks about you know uh, the the computer understand only the binary language right so they understand 10011 like uh, everything related to within you know 1 and 0 so that is a binary language and each and every instruction to the computer is given uh, using the binary languages but we don't know what does it mean right to understand this binary language we have a interface which is operating system right so we need to be very clear we need to make sure that you know each and everything on the screen which are each and everything on the interface of the application each and everything on the interface of the product though it could be a physical product it could be a digital product the interface should be clear enough it should be you know uh, easy to understand it should be you know uh, straightforward in you know uh, in any simple language clear navigation and intuitive layouts right so make sure uh, you focus on the clarity when we say uh, you know uh, ux principles basically there is another principle which is consistency what does it mean consistency is basically you know uh, each and everything which you are plotting on uh, your product each and everything which you are designing on your product has to be consistent has to be you know built upon a theme has to be have a relation between uh, each and you know every component so when we say consistent uh, basically you know uh, your uh, design has to be you know built in a such way uh, where it is uh, looking identical uh, where you know like let's say primary button right uh, if you have a primary button on page 1 and if you have a primary button on page 3 those has to be identical those has to be consistent because then only user will understand okay uh, i had performed some actions using this button and i can you know follow the same actions no matter in on which page i am i uh, i can you know follow the same actions which will help them to easily understand right so basically uh, consistency uh, is uh, something where you know maintaining a consistent design throughout your product which help uh, users to build a mental model right and uh, which basically helps you know them to making it easier for them to navigate okay it could be consistent button styles it could be consistent schemas uh, consistent navigation pattern uh, basically everything you know uh, when we consistently uh, put together it basically builds a cohesive user experience right and uh, in the principles basically you know um, last uh, part which we can you know say uh, is a crucial or you know a critical in uh, ux design is basically feedback 
when we say feedback it is not uh, something which you know uh, user feedback it is something you know our product or our application is giving a proper feedback to the user right so when i say feedback uh, basically if you again go back to the same example of a switchboard right uh, until unless you know if you see the design of the switch basically it is something like that uh, i'm just you know trying it from the side view uh, right so if you place it down it will basically you know like this the you know just opposite way or if you take an example of a of a switch button right uh, in any in, in any interface right so it is something like this right so you have two uh, two iterations like it is off it is on so you know uh, to basically uh, give the visual feedback to the user we define different states of the button right uh, so you know which basically gives a clear feedback to the user you know uh, when we say uh feedback user should know when uh, you know they perform any action or you know any action has been taken or completed it is not necessarily you know if it is a user driven action if it is a system driven action it could be any action just user need to make sure that you know uh, the action which has been completed or which has been taken is either you know successful or uh, if there is any error right so user need to easily understand uh and you know they should be uh, getting a visual cue right like, okay uh, uh, like a success message or an error notification right which basically helps them to understand ki uh, uh, i have performed this action or system has performed this action and it is successful it is failed it could be anything right but user at least need to know the feedback from the system uh, when you know they perform or the system perform any action right uh now uh, we have talked more about you know the different principles i guess uh, we have you know spent a lot of time on uh, uh, <laughs> talking about the ux principles uh, but yes it is very important that you know you need to study all those uh, uh, you know ux uh, fundamentals ux principles because until and unless you uh, go into details of these principles you will not able to you know uh, start your designs and you will not able to uh, make the products which are lovable which are valuable to the user right and now uh, i had mentioned when we you know start the design basically we start with the user uh, user centered philosophy right so when we say user centered design uh, what we have to do uh, when we say user centered right when we say uh, user centered design philosophy it is basically a philosophy that places the user at forefront of the design process uh, which includes you know understanding your users needs uh, behaviors and you know uh, preferences uh it is essential to understand you know uh, everything uh, uh which uh, you know related to their needs and behaviors and preferences uh, will be very important in creating a meaningful user experience right uh, when we say you know uh, uh let's say uh if you are content uh, let's say if you are conducting a user interview right or if you are conducting a survey or creating a user persona uh, to gain the insights uh, into your target audience right you need to make sure all the aspects which you need to take the design decisions you are covering them in your interviews in your surveys uh, while creating the personas right so make sure to consider the uh, interviews consider the uh, uh, you know creating of the user personas defining the surveys uh, uh, in you know very early stage of your product uh development life cycle right then uh again you know uh prototyping is a uh, very uh, important and you know one of the key aspects of user centered design because when we create prototype basically we you know uh, show it to the user we give it a visual clue to the user okay this is something uh, you would be expecting as a end product even before you know developing the entire product so prototype basically uh, help us to you know test and validate our assumptions test and validate our design decisions which we made right let's say uh, uh, we have defined an information architecture right and uh, uh, we don't know okay uh, if you know uh, a piece of information let's say uh, this is abc information right and let's say there is one more piece of information which is uh, which could be xyz right now when we say uh, when we have defined information architecture we assume or you know we think that this could be 
highest priority for the user and that's why we have put it on the first rank and we think you know this could be at the second rank but when we actually go ahead and test our prototype when we actually show the prototype to the user when we actually show the order of the information to the users we understand okay uh, is what we are assuming is correct is it the same way users are thinking or not right so we need to under, uh, understand what basically user uh, means right so prototype help us to understand and validate our assumptions and the design decisions which we made even before the final implementation of the product right uh, definitely we'll be creating the feedback uh, sorry uh, we'll be creating the prototypes in uh, upcoming chapters but uh, this is something you know is uh, uh, very important when we talk about uh, the ux principles right and uh, definitely as i said uh, in the introduction itself if we get you know time at the end of this video we may uh, go through the case studies or we may have a separate uh, session on the case studies because i don't think you know uh, a case study uh, like already we have been you know uh, stretching a lot on the ux principles so i'll avoid case studies for now if we feel we need to have it definitely we can have a separate session on the case studies right Uh, how to create case studies uh, we can go through a couple of case studies which uh, we already created uh, we may you know uh, discuss that uh, if you need any help on the case studies definitely feel free to comment it out uh, will definitely help you on that aspect as well and there you have it uh, a brief exploration of ux design principles and the best practices right so uh, remember creating a positive user experience is an ongoing process that involves continuous learning and adaptation it is not something that you know you have started with a goal uh, you know uh, to reach here uh, but you know that not necessarily uh, you know in the different milestones of your journey you will you know uh, it is not necessary that you will reach here only because you might you know uh, learn more about your users you might you know improve your assumptions you might uh, uh change your design decisions iterate your designs and you know uh, test them against the users and based on your test based on your iterations it might be you know uh this is something you assume but uh, there might be you know some different route and uh, the actual goal of the application could be something different which user you know wants uh, so basically you know so make sure that you remember creating a positive experience is you know an ongoing and an iterative process that involves you know continuously uh learning and adaptation of the things right if you have any questions or want to share your own experience with ux design feel free to drop them into the comment box below don't forget to like this video don't forget to you know uh, subscribe and hit that bell icon uh, for more content on figma on ui ux design etc uh, yes actually there was no plan of creating you know second part of this series uh, of the scratch course but unfortunately you know the the topic depth and the the claim uh, which i have already made at the beginning of this video is okay uh, you will definitely be master of figma by end of this uh, crash course and that's why you know i don't want to you know uh, uh, do it uh, something you know crappy or shit so yes uh, in this first part of crash course we have you know so far learned Uh, how to getting started with figma what is the figma interface provides what are the features which figma has how to create components how to create design styles how to create uh, text styles in figma how to uh, basically you know create a navigation bar component in figma and how to at, uh, master the figma component creation uh, and then we have learned about responsiveness also you know how to create the components which are responsive uh, right so now the second part of this series uh, or of this crash course would be more on you know uh, we'll be taking an example of uh, an application and we'll be designing it from scratch right we'll be uh, drawing the wireframes we'll be taking the wireframes we'll be finalizing the wireframes then we'll be you know uh, developing the actual design based on those wireframes right so yes uh, till the next video of the series make sure you uh, <laughs> uh, you know go through this video again and again and master the principles at least uh, the ux principle part right i would uh, recommend you to watch it twice or thrice because that is very important and crucial part of uh, your design journey ahead so yes uh, stay tuned keep watching for the space uh, for the uh, keep watching the space for the next video of this crash course yep uh, till the next video keep watching keep learning keep designing